This is one of the new products the Varmenta crew found interesting while attending the 2023 SHOT Show. Be sure to check out our other videos from the show. Here we go. Hey guys, it's David with Varmenter Magazine. Today I have the unique privilege of spending some time here with Dave Kiff of Pacific Tool Engage. And anybody in the industry knows Pacific Tool Engage and you know their reamers, uh, go and no-go gauges. However, they do a lot more than that. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dave. He's gonna kind of go over the company, what all they do, what they have new coming out. And to that, hey, I'll let you go. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we've been busy in the last couple of years since COVID. Uh, finally got you know things going in the firearm industry, so we've been trying to keep up with everybody. It's hard to do, hard to find people right now. But yeah, uh, we jumped out and tried to make it easier for the gunsmiths, we um, and manufacturers for that matter, because of the fact that you know before they buy our breech tool, or maybe a semi finisher, a finisher, a rougher. So we started experimenting with muzzle flush, and uh, we even have. Not only the large shops, but the one-man gun shops are buying these now. They're the uh, one-and-done reamers. They've got <clears throat> six flutes or five flutes. One flute's a straight flute. Then you've got a one-degree spiral, a three-degree spiral, and then back to a straight. Then vice versa. You know, we've got this. Everything's different on the geometry, so you have a different wear pattern. And uh, it's just a, a long-lasting tool with a, a good viscosity on your uh, sulfurated petroleum. I mean, petroleum-based uh, fluid is always the best to use for reaming if you want longevity. Water soluble will eat it to look just quicker than hell. So um, I I recommend that. And this tool here, 1300 RPM, three and a half to fourth alpha rev, it'll spit out and eat up those chips like pepper. Just it pushes them right out as fast as they're lifted and separated out of the chamber. Then for the guys that have lesser pressure, we make a full length three flute reamer. Uh, this is one that um, a lot of guys have used in the past and they really like it. Josh Koontz, he uses one like this and he says it gives him such a nice finish and it, it's just really fast. Another one plunge and done basically. Uh, Robert Gradius, he's no longer with us, but he asked me to make this for him uh, years ago. And he said, Dave, he said, uh, I think we can do something with this. And I said, you're kidding me. I said, with all those chip breakers in there, it's going to give you a rough finish. And he mm -hmm. said, no, I bet not. And he was right. So we staggered the chip breaker where not one chip breaker is the same. They're, okay. they're on the flutes, but they're different place on all three flutes. So they, it's like you got a wiper behind the rougher. So exactly. Yeah. And uh, like 33 seconds, 50 seconds. This is good when you have... Um, you know, a, a pump that will only pump maybe uh, 150 to, you know, maybe 300. Anything after that, then you can use a six foot or a five foot tool. As far as that goes, the tooling part, uh, I used to sell the three-step tools to, you know, blueprint your action. And um, and then the fixtures, it, just, it seemed like it was so uh, labor-intensive and also expensive for the gunsmith. Mm -hmm. So I decided that if you're gonna do this, let's do it right and make it to where a person can buy one tool and do it in 10 minutes, you know, instead of taking an hour on a lathe. So what we do, and you gotta think about how this works. You find your two closest fitting bushings that fit in the raceway, the bowl. You slide them in there. Let me pull these apart. Put, I put one on both sides. I don't like tapered bushings because tapered bushings only follow the oval shape of the receiver. I like to use straight bushings and slip fit them in to fit the best slip fit possible, no matter what size. If you have to use two different sizes, even. And then when you start your bushings inside, you're starting them through, and this cuts the raceway. The bushings guide it. But after this 705 or 704, 703, whatever you, uh, you know, buy the diameter you want to give your customer. When this goes through, this was a 705. So this is 705 and 3 tenths. So after it cuts 705 and 3 tenths and the bushings start falling out, this is 705, 3 tenths below. 
So this becomes the new bushing. It's right. the solid, it's the solid shaft behind it. And then when it reaches a certain depth, you have die chem on the outside of your, your uh, receiver and the inside lug face of your receiver. This kisses the inside, and whether it's a Hala or Remington, Ruger, what have you, this is the length of the blueprint for the receiver for the threaded portion. So I put this at the minor or maximum uh, small ID of the thread so it doesn't cut the thread out. It just chews it if it's oval or out of yes. round. So then it kisses the outside face of the receiver, the inside lug face, simultaneously while it just ran through the raceway so everything in this inside this receiver is perfectly true within two tenths people say oh you can't do that well if the tool is ground to two tenths inspected to two tenths and you remove 100 percent of the material in all these spots it's going to be within two tenths absolutely yeah so then you take that out and if you do this three or four times you know that you've just done that in about five or ten minutes absolutely and then and the way I drive that too is um, I put a quarter 28 in the back there so I can put a quarter 28 in a little Dremel or a you know Nikita or something you know drive that with. Yes. And you can drive it by hand too. But, nice. Um, and then uh, of course we make we grind bolts so you can buy a bolt from us you know to to uh, install in it for whatever size so if it's 705 you want to a 702 bolt because you're going to uh, you want a 703 bolt but you buy a 701 or 702 to seracote it because it takes about two thousandths to uh, be under the coat to bring it back up or if you're going to have this uh, pvd coated for you with um some sort of a titanium or hard lube or, or you know fit for duty whatever then we grind it right to size like 703 to 7035 or or more for a 705 raceway and uh, but the key is when you're done with the job you want to know that it's best it can be, but at the same time, you do it as fast as you can to make money. That's what it's all about. Right. And in and doing this, it's, uh, you can still take a, a factory bolt, and uh, we have a jig to trim those. We have a a driver that we put around here. You can put it in, and then we have a spud that will fit in there on the threads, and then you can trim this. Kiss the face, backside of lug, whatever, with that kit, and you really have a nice action. Well, besides gunsmithing, off. obviously smithing gunsmithing tools, you know, somebody who's not interested in doing that, they can buy a, an action right from you. Yes, you can. Yeah, we've got a lot of them now. We're uh, we're working with Ian uh, Kelpley, so we're going to have some Kelpleys. We're going to have some different manufacturers' actions for them to pick from, but also we have our own. Uh, we have, we're working with Stiller out of uh, College Station, and uh, we're going to have some Stillers. But then we have our own actions, too. You know, we, we're we bringing back the Masika uh, action. We're going to be offering those. I have some of those getting ready to go for on sale. And then, matter of fact, I think I got some on there now. And then we're going to try to make it affordable. Um, I'm talking with several manufacturers to help us. We used to be our competitors. Now we find that... Uh, we're not competitors. We work together with friends, and we need to stay together. You know, so Absolutely. we're um, we're going to start putting together some different and faster ways to learn from each other how to make these and you know, keep the cost down for people. Right. Uh, we also have we bought out I think it's just under seven thousand Remingtons when they went bankrupt. We bought uh, barreled actions and, and titanium receivers, stainless steel, just about everything they ever made. We have several hundred of the um, the M40s, M24s, uh, a lot of U.S. stamped uh, with the stripper clip cut, original 1966 through uh, 2006 military actions for sale, bolts. And then um, last week I just finished my first titanium Remington bolt. This uh, Remington bolt weighs 0.4. Yeah, the longest. What did it weigh? 0.4 of an ounce. Okay. Or a 0.4 of a pound. And uh, the 2.4 with the titanium receiver. Now, that's this setup here. 
and uh, we have 0.96 with the long action as shown here. So less than a pound. Less than a pound. 0.96 yeah, pounds. 0.96 pounds. That's what it is. And then 0.4 pounds for the uh, bolt itself. And then with a black two stock that weighs approximately 17 to 19 ounces guaranteed. That's a new one for Peak 44. The uh, it weighs two pounds and, and 13. 2.13. So wow. That's very light. You can with a carbon fiber bolt barrel. Oh. You know you're you're going to have a light rifle. That's for sure. Absolutely. So we're going to try to make these affordable too. I'm going to go back home and um, start bigger, larger runs of these carbon fiber bolts. We have um, the regular steel, tough, uh, military remelt head, and then we have it married to a titanium one-piece uh, dog leg ribs and uh, handles threaded, so you can put your favorite yeah bolt knob, knob, on. Bolt knob on there, and then. I make them uh, with the Mini 16 um, that Jerry Stiller and I came up with back when they were having problems with Seiko Stackers coming out. So we put that in there, uh, or we'll do a Remington head for guys like that. And uh, on 223s, two, two, we, we do a Se uh, Seiko Stackers, small Seiko okay. Stackers. But, um, and obviously, I mean, so bottom metals, they make, bottom metal. they, they, they have a ton of products on you their webpage. You know, it pissed me off the other day. I was looking for, I had to get a rifle finished for a guy that wanted to test it, some parts of his on it. And uh, I had a, had a whole, I must have had 15 black tooth M5s. And I, he wanted a BDL. So we thought we'd start making, and we did for him. We're making M5 BDLs now. Oh, so wow. that if you've got a shorter long action and you want to have a trigger guard four plate on it, you can do that just by picking one up and putting it in. You know, we're going to make sure that every one of them has a overlay with it, so you know, you know what you have. Yeah. And uh, the the short Remington is going to be the original M4066. In the old days, uh, the Marine Corps would use when they very first started working with some of the newer Remingtons back in, I, I guess it was in the early 60s. They would take a long Winchester and they would cut it down. And then they would insert it into because they didn't like the Remington, evidently too too thin or too small. Uh, George Gardner, I could go over see him today. He's uh, going to tell me the rest of the story about that. But um, very interesting. We made those for him for a while in McMillan, but uh, we decided we're going to do it in one piece so that you, you don't have to cut it off to have an original. You do this and do that. You yeah. just buy one. Nice. Or the DD Ross, the original DD Ross. We have those two steel everything we're trying to make we're reproducing every part of every military rifle made whether it's uh, something that you know pgw or whoever you know whatever it was um whether it's redfield stuff or you name it wow. we're gonna manufacture it make sure it's period correct now as far as actions you have your own action that you yeah, guys manufacture yeah, we, have the valhalla. The, we have the valhalla and uh that's a Pretty nice action. I mean, what this is really is a cross between a uh, uh, Nasika and a Stiller, and I have it with the the Tika port. For a lot of guys have rail guns, they like the Tika port. And then if a person has the traditional stocks, uh, Remington cutouts, since they're all Remington footprints, um, then uh, you know, or they're doing the uh, Eagle type cut, um, then we have um, the round extended stiller style or the the new one we're coming out with is the alpha one remington 700 alpha one that's uh, released uh we're going to have um, an aftermarket blueprinted alpha one style so okay that, perfect uh, well can have on this both. particular one which is the valhalla mm -hmm. uh barber magazine we're actually going to get one of these we're going to do a custom build on it so you'll be seeing more of this action in the future so uh, stay tuned for that one. Mm -hmm. Well, Dave, uh, you have a plethora of information, product. I mean, I really encourage much. you guys to go <laughs> on the website, check it out, because everything it sounds like you need for any of machine tooling or you know gunsmithing and actions, they produce it all. So, Dave, okay. thank you very thank much you for very your much. time. Stop and stop by Barometer <laughs> Magazine for more information. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and 
Once you do, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when we release new videos. And of course, head over to varmeter.com or our socials and check out what's going on. Thanks.